Discoid Lupus Erythematosus by Candace Robinson, LVT, Chelsea Bolton, LVT, and Ryan Galland, LVT, for the Companion Animal Dermatology course at Tarleton State University. So, what is discoid lupus erythematosus? Discoid lupus erythematosus, DLE, also known as cutaneous lupus erythematosus, CLE, is an autoimmune disease that results in the patient's immune system seeing its own skin is foreign. Then it tries to destroy it. Another way to define it is as an autoimmune disease in which the patient's own antibodies attack normal components of the skin. This picture shows the nasal plenum of a, of a pet. A little about DLE. Although this disease is common in dogs, it is a fairly uncommon disease in cats. The predominant breeds of DLE are as follows. Collies, German Shepherd Dogs, Siberian Huskies, Shetland Sheep Dogs, Alaskan Malamutes, Chow Chows, also any of the above listed crossbreeds, and there is no age predilection. It is considered to be a benign variant of systemic lupus erythematosus, and it predominantly involves the nasal planum, face, ears, and any lesions beyond the head are very rare. It is often seen in the summer, and it gets worse with sunlight. DLE is usually responsive to treatment. But what causes DLE? The exact cause of discoid lupus erythematosus is not known. Genetics are thought to play a major role in the occurrence of this disease, and ultraviolet light or sunlight is also thought to be a contributing factor to this disease. What to look for, as in clinical signs. With discoid lupus erythematosus, um, clinical signs can present as many different diseases, such as pemphigus facialis, nasal dermatophytosis, and even nasal lymphoma. Since DLE is typically affecting the nose, the most common clinical sign is color change of the nasal planum. Uh, this is usually seen in pigmentation loss where dark areas of the nose um, turn gray, blue, or even pink, and the loss of the pigmentation may be followed by scales and areas of ulceration. Although this usually happens to the front of the nose, the nasal planum area right here, um, Cresting, scaling, and ulceration can also spread over the bridge of the nose and be seen on the tips of the ear pinna. This is the nasal planum of a dog right here. I can see if I can get the arrow there, the nasal planum here, and her nose is affected more towards the top and extending back onto the bridge of the nose here. Diagnosing DLE. Diagnosing DLE is typically made with a punch biopsy as, in, as seen in this picture here. Um, and then that punch biopsy of the suspected tissues are sent out for histopathology. Since this area um, on the patient is typically very sensitive and we're piercing their nose with a round blade, um, general sedation, or excuse me, general anesthesia or sedation is strongly suggested. Treatment of DLE. When we're treating DLE, the principal treatment is to do no harm. Um, this is usually a benign disease that generally does not warrant uh, the risk of side effects from the use of systemic drugs. Treatment is um, not life threatening threatening, excuse me, but it may be disfiguring. And there are four levels of treatment to be considered. There are one, primary treatments, two, secondary treatments, three, supportive treatments, and four, topical treatments. Primary treatments for disco, discoid lupus erythematosus are typically steroidal creams applied topically to the affected areas and anti-inflammatory creams to help with pain. Topical glucocorticoids are used for mild cases. Secondary treatments are uh, prednisolone, which is a corticosteroid that can be used for very severe cases, 
and patients should, should definitely be monitored while on this medication. Supportive treatments. Sunscreen, absolutely. Number one, um, your dog can benefit for sure from the use of veterinary approved sunscreens. You wanna make sure that they are waterproof and we're going to want to avoid direct solar exposure. So walking um, during the morning and evening times, if we can manage that, and in a shaded area would be best for your pet. Nutritional benefits from certain dog foods could help as well. And shampooing with alonoblinol shampoos can help remove scaling, but should be done very gently because the area is going to be very sensitive. Topical treatments for discoid lupus erythematosus can be accomplished with um, glucocorticoids and anti-inflammatory creams, um, but it would be a long-term problem. Is discoid lupus erythematosus zoonotic? There have not been any studies to confirm or deny zoonosis. Typically, it is thought to be non-zoonotic and non-enzoonotic as well. Um, breeding of predisposed patients have been, um, is not recommended. So what is the outcome of this? Uh, prognosis is good um, for discoid lupus erythematosus. Dogs that usually um, have this diagnos diagnosis go into remission and they feel fine. This is a non-life-threatening disease, but it can cause painful lesions that will require long-term care. So in conclusion, discoid lupus erythematosus will be painful and should be monitored very closely. Once the diagnosis has been complete and definitive, it is important to treat any underlying issues that may be present along the way um, with the lupus. Lupus usually requires long-term care, and patients that are diagnosed with lupus should be regularly monitored by um, a veterinarian, um, including physical exams, complete blood counts, um, chemistry serum panels, and supportive treatments definitely should be considered by the owner, um, including sunscreen. Um, don't let your dog burn or get tan because it doesn't need one. So protect your dog if it's more um, protect your dog if it is more susceptible to the disease. So if there's any questions, anybody, anybody, no. All right, thank you for watching. Here are my references.